Hey everybody! Welcome back. Oh my god, Tomo, one second into the video, you decide you want to escape? He's like, oh shit, I didn't know you were recording Isaac. I thought you were doing RimWorld. Isaac, well, well, okay, well, you know what? Tomorrow's RimWorld day, buddy. Tomorrow's RimWorld day. Basement 1, start with Incubus 0, VL7, F49X. Decent stats, and also Incubus, but then also on top of that, Incubus? We have the mark. And the mark is wonderful. I used the unicorn horn there just to get a little bit of invincibility to preserve our spirit heart. I don't want the same thing to happen on the this run that happened on the last run. And what happened on the last run? Well, we got a pretty successful win. I mean, we did have a, a hush kill in there, so it obviously didn't go too bad. But I kind of screwed myself out of some early deals with the devil. And only by, you know, the grace of Edmund himself did I manage to get some deals with the devil that allowed me to maybe buoy myself up through the uh, remainder of the game. If this is... Uh, if this is Small Rock, I think we win the run. Ooh, maybe a little bit more complex than that, fair enough. But the mark early and then uh, Incubus is our starting passive item is ridiculous. Even like, you know, Unicorn Horn is our active is fine. It's not a game winning active item by any stretch of the imagination. It's relatively underpowered compared to, you know, Unicorn Stump. Unicorn Stump needs an enabler. It needs some kind of uh, orbital to make it really tick, but, you know, orbitals are common enough that it's extremely likely to get one. Or at least very likely to get one. Luck upgrade's nice as well. Yep, land on top of my Unicorn Horn. Not the shrewdest move there. WarioWare. Pick up a speed upgrade, which is actually, considering our HP, damage, DPS, I think a speed upgrade is actually very, very relevant right now. But let's just go check out our last rooms. Uh, one of which will be our item room and probably not worry about a secret room or anything along those lines. Um, this is a shop, not an arcade. HP's fine. I think we don't worry about an arcade for the next floor. We come in here, try to buy a bomb. There's no bomb for sale. Instead we get a... <laughs> it's not very good. All right. Um, I was really hoping that would be like a two of clubs or something, you know, give me a bomb that I could then use to hop possibly get uh, more spirit arts or get a golden chest even or get small rock. Um, but either way, this was a really, really good first floor. And we've got like the perfect storm right now. We got everything that body needs, especially early on on an Isaac run. Uh, we have great HP, a good mix of spirit arts and red hearts to boot, which is even better. And then on top of that, we also have uh, really, really good DPS. And once you got, oh my god, four more spirit arts as well. Once you got both of those, the world is really your burrito, you know? There's not much that you can uh, do to fuck this up. We'd have to seriously play terribly in order to put ourselves in a bad spot now. I, I had a feeling I was putting myself in a dangerous position there, but it ended up working out just fine regardless. Um, I'm feeling like... I'm feeling dark matter on this floor. I'm trying to tap into my latent psychic energies. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if we even want that yet. I mean, we have the speed necessary to uh, probably absorb a speed down. And I guess it would be good to be able to step on rocks, except for all those times where it, like, super isn't, and you end up blowing yourself up or, you know, getting hit by a poisonous mushroom or something along those lines. But could also give us a, an easy engine to generate some extra money on this floor, but I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. It saves us some bombs, but in the end, we usually have enough bombs to blow up every tinted rock past, like, the first or second floor anyway. But anyway, yeah, I'm trying to tap into my latent psychic energies. Like, for example, I'm thinking really hard. ESP, what's in the item room? I'm thinking it's probably Thunder Thighs is my guess. What do you mean I'm right? I told you. You know, you have to, maybe he's more with it. Maybe he's Maybelline. Maybe it's cold reading. But anyway. Maybe her name's Goldeen. Probably not, though. Uh, don't name me. If you're going to name your kid after a Pokemon, you should name them after, like, a sweet Pokemon. I'll accept Nine Tails. Although, you know, at that point, you haven't given your kid a great shot to be insulated against the cruelty of youth. On the other hand... Vulpix is probably a little bit more out there. I don't know. Ninetales is, is a bit eccentric as well. But why not just go for, like, fucking Pinsir or something? You know, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you land amongst the stars. I'm gonna take everything in here. So we just picked up uh, Satanic Bible over Unicorn Horn, which I think is a good choice. And Abaddon and Cambian Conception. 
seems like a pretty nice gamut. Uh, can be in conception early is fairly valuable, but the odds are it's probably not going to pay out with too much that's super useful. Guppy's Paw is really nice here. Five deal with the devil. Six deal with the devil items, actually. Out of our first items, six of them are deal with the devils. Incubus, the Mark, Abaddon, can be in conception, and Satanic Bible. Wait, is that only five? Incubus, Mark, Abaddon, can be in conception, Satanic Bible. Yeah, I guess it's only five. But still... Considering there's only seven items on the right side of the screen, that's pretty impressive. And by impressive, I mean, you know, are you impressed by RNG? Because, I mean, I didn't really have too much control over it, except for not getting hit eight times and thus losing a deal with the devil chance. So, I don't really want to take too much credit for it. But this run is looking unshakable. Day alive, damn it. It's a miracle. I, have, I still haven't seen Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. It's because we live in the golden age of television. There's too much great TV to watch, man. And I also, I very rarely do I even end up watching TV. Which is not like, I think people sometimes think that I'm using that as like a status symbol. I do waste time on occasion. But I waste more time just browsing around like an idiot on the internet. I don't think that not watching TV makes me any smarter or dumber than anybody else. But, um... I did watch all of Stranger Things and I was like, this is awesome. And then I saw, I actually, while I was programming... Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I watched all of Lady Dynamite, starring Maria Bamford. I like Maria Bamford, and I was like, the show's okay. And it, I think it said a lot, it, it taught me a lot about myself, that we live in an era of such good television, that I was like, that show's like an 8. I'm disappointed. Like, okay, it's good, but does it make me, you know, question, you know, what further heights the genre could possibly get to? No, it was just enjoyable. And these days, the show's got to freaking blow you away or it's not even worth watching. It's a ridiculously competitive environment. I don't think I really need that. But I, I, heard, I heard season two of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt is not that good. And season one is amazing. So maybe I should just watch season one. But then it's like, you know, do I really want to watch just season one? Why don't I watch season one of something that's more long-running but also critically acclaimed, right? But then I think, and I'm like, man, I knew that the Ender's Game sequels were not as renowned as the original Ender's Game, but at the same time, I still read Ender's Game, and I was like, Ender's Game is pretty dope. And then it gets even more complex, because you're like, man, Orson Scott Card kind of has some controversial opinions. But I think, do you separate an artist from their work? I think you probably do separate. I mean, I still watch the first Naked Gun movie, even though O.J. Simpson got paid for his work in that film. I think that, that it's a fantastic... Uh, bit of satire and then all of a sudden I'm like four different genres and mediums away from my where I originally started this conversation and it just it's a whole ball of wax so the, to answer your question no I'm not gonna watch Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt okay because it starts me on an existential n-way highway life is an n-way but you know either way n-way either way n-way the nihilist uh, philosophy I don't really know what I was talking about. That last floor was just okay. And you know what's a good run when you get the Parasite? A very fun item and you go, eh, it's just alright. It's a Lady Dynamite of items at this point. We also got Coat Hanger, which is also quite good. Pales in comparison to the, uh, you know, frequency and magnitude of the items that we got earlier as well. But still certainly far from a... Uh, a bad situation here. I mean, we're 7 minutes 35 seconds. Oftentimes, this would be like right where we're about to leave the second floor. Instead, we're like halfway through the fourth floor. And I keep taking dumb damage and not being penalized for it. So I really feel like, you know, the game has basically decided at this point that we're good to go. And that's a reassuring feeling. Looking very likely we're going to get to 23 wins. Uh, we'll save that. 23 wins is it's above average. And I'm, it's not, again, fishing for compliments. But it's not like we've really had to, uh, you know, buckle down recently. In order to get it, you know. They've been pretty much giving us free wins for, uh, for a little while here. At least, like, four or five of our last six were basically, like, guaranteed. The only one that wasn't really was uh, that missing no run. And that run was just, I mean, I did it to myself. I can't really complain. 
This feels like a secret room. Which, really, I should just use a key to get into our shop if I'm that interested in it, but... Try to get some extra value. Absolutely 100% worth it. That was sweet. We got a lot of money, but we also got Head of the Keeper, which is, in many ways, infinite money. Um, we're gonna just keep ourselves donating here. Well, it was the same make hay when the sun's up. We're gonna make hay when the sun's up. The sun is up on the run right now. So we're gonna say, hey, donation machine, take some of my cash. And uh, this is just to keep it there for when... You never know, it's possible we could have 70 bad runs in a row and need to bomb the shit out of our donation machine for 10 cents in each one of those. It's fairly unlikely, but why not take this opportunity to further insulate ourselves from that? And then the worst would be, you know, it's been like a year since I've been building this donation machine back up. The worst would be if I uh, accidentally got it all the way back up and then just promptly broke it again. Or would that be hilarious? One thing I like is that, you know, sometimes you'll see like on stream or on, you know, YouTube videos, commenters will be like, that streamer only did this stupid thing for views. That never, the conspiracy theory never shows up in these Isaac episodes. Rarely do I see someone, or do you, never do I see someone going, man, NL's only being a moron to, to make his clips more viral. People seem to genuinely accept that when I'm being a moron, they're like, yeah, that's Northern Lion again. Wasn't really paying attention. You know, he's book smart. He's not, like, he's not street smart. That's probably true. I think I'm book smart. I'm book smart enough to know that I'm not actually that smart. Which I think is the hallmark of someone who's truly book smart, if you really get down to brass tacks. But when it comes to street smarts, I just, you know, if I'm walking through a dangerous neighborhood, I just, I'm like, hey, wh what am I going to do if somebody comes up and is like, hey, give me your money? Well, what I, what I should probably do is just give him my money. That seems sensible. But um, if he's like, hey, I'm going to fucking kill you. Then what do I do? I've got a whole script playing in my head that's like, Oh, I've been waiting for this shit, motherfucker. I've been, you picked the wrong day to mess with me. And then I just start swinging my arms like up and around my head. Act like I've lost my actual mind. And you try to scare off the other guy. I think it'll make him very self-conscious and maybe make him question uh, who he's going to town with. And, it, you know, equal opportunity. I could also be robbed or killed by, by a woman. It doesn't have to be a man. When we get yelled at by, you know, people in Vancouver, I'm not going to say that it's just homeless people. Very rarely do I get yelled at by someone who looks like they came from a home, though. I'm like, you know, it, it tends to be it tends to be homeless dudes yelling at me. Kate and I went to a restaurant like a year ago. Dude out front was like, hey, do you have any spare change? I'm like, sorry, man, don't have any change. He's like, my mother was a whore! I'm very sorry to hear that. It was an abrupt change. I'm not making fun of you in this comment in case you've gotten on your feet and you're watching me or you've fallen further and you're watching me for that matter. You know, this is clearly something on a mental illness level that's that's not going well for you there. But at the same time, I'd really just like to have a scotch egg right now. Could you please move? You're blocking this business's doorway. Wait, how does the story end? Well, we just walked in. He was still shouting, but... It seems like his problem was more with his his mom than it was with me, really. So we fought Krampus, we got Magic Mush from the boss fight. You know, it's pretty much business as usual right now. We're probably going to go and use the Moon card uh, on the boss rush. Although, to be honest with you, this is a run where uh, boss rush, I think, is very doable. If we decide that we want to, you know, take a stab at it. Boss rush is not that difficult to begin with, but it's really just like... Is it worth doing from a fun standpoint? And I think that, you know, right now, our damage, especially mostly because of Incubus, but also those sweet damage upgrades we've gotten, um, is it probably is going to be relatively fast if we're into it. But um, the other thing, though, is, like, why not teleport? Like, it, it's such a victimless crime. It makes you look like you know what you're doing in Isaac. You know, I'm sure if you've, if you've just started playing the game and you're like, first off, what? You have to beat mom in under 20 minutes? First off, what? You have to beat mom? Um, oh, we don't even have another bomb. Uh, but then on top of... Ooh, don't mind if I do. But then on top of that, you gotta fight every boss in the game? And you're like, yeah, actually, it's like... 
it's so easy that people have gotten bored of it by now. Their eyes will pop out of their head like that woman on, you know, Guinness World Records TV show who always graced the covers of the books for like 10 years. That and the dude with the world's longest fingernails. Alright. Worth it. Doing fine here. Champion Belt is just like... You know, there's a couple of maxims to which I, I stand true when I play Isaac. One of them is never pass up a damage upgrade if you got the opportunity to snag it. And the, the cost, you know, the cost isn't too great. It, at, at this point, it, it kind of becomes less of a maxim and more of like a, a tool for analysis. But just in general, never pass up a, a damage upgrade. We will moon card out and grab Perthrow. We haven't been to our item room yet, but who cares? We'll just go get it after we uh, get out of here. And this is Depths 2 uh, already going to be at boss rush. A little ridiculous. I mean, I thought after the Depths 1, it's like you pretty much said all you needed to say. You told a complete story. Unless you're going to go anthology style, maybe just like let the series of the Depths pass on and like be... Uh, well liked in everybody's memory, but I guess it is like your choice. So we'll take chocolate milk Moon card out of here Grab that spirit heart. I don't know blow this dude up. I didn't really want to take chocolate milk even but um, it, It's good like objectively good, right? But it does kind of cannibalize the um, The parasite to some extent because we're not putting as many shots down, but Maybe it's not as bad as I thought Plus, it's also making these Incubus shots disgusting. Good lord. We also just picked up Dark Bum. An item of which I am quite fond. Uh, not that we're ever going to need it, but sure, why not, right? So we'll head down to the next floor. This is looking like I don't want to turn you away. I know we've had a lot of very fast runs lately. I can't tell a lie, though. This is looking like it's going to be yet another one. It also looks like another one where we might want to fight the Hush. So we got a surplus of keys and a lot of HP, uh, and very plausible for us to gain HP. Uh, wait, we have two dark bombs. One of them must have come from Cambian Conception. That's actually, I don't know if I feel comfortable saying it's bad, but I definitely feel comfortable in saying that two dark bombs is in almost no way better than one. And the only way it could be better than one is if we, uh, you know, got so much more coverage we didn't leave any red hearts behind accidentally. But uh, instead, you know, that means we might have two at half a charge instead of one at a full charge. And it's definitely better to get those charges pop. But let's be realistic. It's very unlikely to make much of a difference over the course of this run. So continue moving on. Yeah, I mean, in the end, I think all I can really do is show... Ooh, that was bad. First off, don't fuck it up. But secondly, show appreciation for the game giving me some pretty solid RNG lately. And, you know, leaving me in a state that I really haven't had a problem with. You know, the game has been very good about... Giving me runs that are very winnable, so as long as that continues, I mean, the runs might be short and there might be a little bit of, of drama that is absent from them, but I can't complain. We're going to take Dark Matter, we're going to take Gimpy. Um, dark Matter for the damage. I think we're just going to hold per throw. Dark Matter for the damage, uh, Gimpy for the fact that now we're on permanent Polaroid invincibility, but also beyond that... Um, when we kill enemies, they have a better chance to spawn a half red heart. That half red heart can turn into spirit hearts anyway, so... I think that's quite positive for us. We don't really... I, I can't imagine us needing that key. This is not complaining. Don't take this as, oh, NL doesn't know, you know, how good he's got it. Because I know how good the, the RNG has been lately, you know? I'm, I'm very familiar with a standard uh, set of 10 Isaac runs. Let's put it that way. And we've been kicking the shit out of these Isaac runs. And mostly that's due to the game's uh, very benevolent uh, item sets that it's been giving us lately. But um, I would like a guppy transformation. If we're talking about stuff that I'd, I'd endeavor to enjoy in the future, guppy transformation wouldn't kick it out of bed for eating crackers. You know what I mean? You may not know what I mean. That's an old colloquialism that means, you know, I have a problem with this thing or this person, but it is attractive. I.e., if it was in my bed eating some wheat thins, I'd still be like, you know what? You're welcome here. Although, I'd probably be like, just get a plate. Like, why are you eating wheat thins in bed? In what way does this appeal to you? I don't understand. At this point, I, I really can't justify not fighting Hush. We're six, 17 minutes into the run. It's like we've almost got to fight Hush just to get our money's worth on this run. Like I, You know, I got a new can of sparkling water for this, did I not? Apparently, I did not. God damn it. That's fine. 
We'll still fight the hush. Mostly because we're already down here. It'll take the map. We'll take the Hierophon card. Wonderful. And I think you just keep uh, the Perthro for the chest. Um, yeah, yeah, you know what? I don't know why these bombs are exploding, but we'll take Headless Baby over Super Bandage. Daddy Long Legs is well worth it. I'd say we got our money's worth or our time's worth coming down here as long as we don't, you know, uh, freaking die. Uh, I think we want more chests, and I think we don't care as much about range, so let's move on. No Curse Thigh. That's the good thing here. No, wow, that, the huge range bonus there. Doing a lot of damage, at least as much damage as we did last time. And again, this is almost as much to just be like, for me, it doesn't feel like I've actually put in the work, unless it's at least like a 20 minute Isaac run. It's weird because we didn't really get, we, let me put it this way, we didn't get that, you know, over the top item where you pick it up and you go, okay, now it's all over. Instead of getting those S tier items, we got like six A plus items. And I'd say that's probably better. I'd rather have straight A's than, you know, straight B's and one 100. You guys, how does that work at your schools in the United States of America, or over the rest of the world for that matter? In high school, our report cards gave us a mark out of 100. And I guess even still in college and university to this day they do. But then also you have a GPA? It just seems like a needless step in laundering to me. To then be like, okay, so your average is 94, your GPA is a 3.91. I'm like, why don't you just tell, why can't I just put it on my resume? I got a 94 average. They don't, okay, you got a 94, what's your GPA? Well, hold on, let me get the proprietary calculator out. Well, this course I got a 96 in it, but unfortunately its credit weight was only 9, 9.4ths as much as this course in which I got a 96 in. So, uh, you know, the answer is, uh, go fuck yourself. I'm, I'm too busy to go through your needless arbitrary calculations here. I believe you do get extra damage for tap shooting with chocolate milk, but that might be nullified by the armor of the hush. Which sounds like a Sunset Rubdown song. Oh my god, NL knows who Sunset Rubdown is. Dog, I was 16 when Apologies to the Queen Mary came out. I'm all into that Spencer Krug cult nonsense, okay? I think I wasn't reading Pitchfork Media every day between the years of 2004 and 2009. How else would a member of the young Smuganati come to fruition? I beg you, just die. Look at the odds, they're stacked against you. The thousand nations of the Persian army descend upon you, where arrows will blot out the sun, blah, blah, blah. Hey, careful. They should make a movie about Cambyses. The Persian emperor who came to before Xerxes. And you know what they call it? They call it 298. I tried. I tried. I tried to say good. That could be on the 298 soundtrack. You know what track number it would be? If you said 298, that's fucking ridiculous. How many songs are on this album? Just because that's the last number we said doesn't make that a realistic answer. What kind of album is 298 songs? Even Magnetic Fields only has 69 love songs. 298 songs is just too many. Even if they're the average length of a Guided by Voices song, it's a fucking five hour long album. It's too much. All right. We have defeated the hush. I'm ready to move on with my life. See what awful damage sponge boss ends up punishing me in Afterbirth Plus. Who knows? Probably Shrek's nutsack. Oh, did I spoil that? Okay. Here we go. Upwards and onwards. Now I feel like I put in an honest day at the office on this run. We're at 21 minutes on the cathedral. And I'm guessing that this is basically 100% guaranteed to be our boss location. I keep thinking I have Cursed Eye because of this charge shot. Stop with that lame charge shit. I wish you quit it. I sent some milk at your feet. It. Gratata. Might as well. Yes, this is indeed the right direction. If I sound like I'm bored, 
It's not boredom. It's not I'm getting bored of Isaac, at least. It's just that these past few runs, um, well, at least a couple of these past few runs, have gotten to the point early where victory was basically guaranteed. We had that missing no run recently that was different. And I do, even on a run where, like, a win is guaranteed, I take pleasure in the process, you know? It's like, you know, some people are into cutting their fingernails or something like that, you know? It's a chore to some extent, but at the same time, maybe you find it enjoyable. Like, in my school, they used to do lice checks. And I brought this up before, and people go, did you go to school, like, during the Great Depression? Look, I was, in a, I was six, all right? I didn't create the policy at the school. But basically, like, the school's helpers would come by, and with, a, like, a long toothpick, they'd comb through your hair and look for lice, you know? And everybody would think that a kid would be like, yo, that sucks, because I might get outed for having head lice. And, you know, that comes with all sorts of uh, stereotypes, like people might think my family's dirty, I don't bathe or something like that. But really, everyone in my school looked forward to the head lice checks because it always felt so relaxing. It was like a proto-ASMR thing. Everybody was super into it. Weirdly enough, it's like that. Like, even though this run's a guaranteed win, more or less, unless we super fuck it up, I'm still having a fun time with the process, but I would like some extra tension next time. If we don't get it this time, that's okay. But next time. Uh, I'm actually going to be an idiot and re-roll the Halo. Because I don't want to ruin permanent Polaroid invincibility. And we got Proptosis. So, you might say, Northern Lion, how does it feel to be the world's smartest man? It feels pretty good. Um, I mean, I've always known that I was special deep down in my heart. But to be assured of it here is a... Uh, feels good. Uh, obviously, I'm being facetious, but at the same time, dude, this damage is re e donkulous. If this was a Counter Strike map, it would be D E underscore donk. D donkulous doesn't really work. If this was a VR headset that was losing ground to HTZ, it would be the donk D E underscore donkulous riff. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, okay. Get in here. The run's over, even with the hush fight. 24 minutes, basically. Thank you, Chocolate Milk. Thank you, Parasite. Thank you, Proptosis. And thank you all of those ridiculous early game damage upgrades. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.